This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. On Stockbox today, we're joined by the CEO of AIS Resources, Phil Thomas. Hi, Phil. How are you? I'm great. Thanks, Mark. Good. It's good to have you on. Good to be talking to you on Stockbox today. And of course, we're going to be talking about the RNS that AIS released this week, where you state that you have acquired a 20% interest in Tech One Lithium Resources Core, the Inca Huasi Sala project in Argentina. So, could you, in your own words, just sum up the RNS for us, please? Yeah, sure, um, Mark. It, it's a it's an interesting project. Um, the Salar is up near a place called Tola Grande, uh, which is not far from Pasitos, which is a major centre with a large number of uh, commercial Salars around it. And uh, Inkoasi Salar has been explored. Um, Pepinini, an Australian listed company, has been there for quite a while. Um, Gangfeng uh, Metals, which is obviously the, the biggest, large, uh, the largest um, battery metals producer uh, in China. And Orocobre recently acquired uh, an area there. And I think South American Salars have also got um, an involvement there as well. So it's a very popular Salar um, because it's uh, in, a, in a great infrastructure area, um, good roads to it. Uh, the, it's right on the border of Chile and Argentina. Um, so, in fact, the border goes across the, um, the uh, western side. Um, but it's, it's a, a, a salar that's had a little bit of work on it, um, three or four drill holes by Gangfeng, a couple of holes by um, Pepinini, um, some good geophysics, and that gave us pretty high level of comfort that this was going to be a great project. Uh, lithium grades around 300. Uh, the aquifer is easy to uh, identify. Uh, it's a shallow... Um, project like Rincon, it's not deep like Pizuelos or Washitok or Pesitos, so um, it's commercially very attractive. Okay, and what is a salar, Phil? That's a new word that I've not heard before. Okay, Spanish for Salt Lake. I, when I first heard it, I thought, goodness, what does that mean? Um, but it, it's basically a, a basin, and we call it a euhedric basin, which basically means that there's clays or impervious layers on the very bottom of it and the um, volcanics get leached by groundwater. They go into sandstone aquifers and, and other uh, porous rocks and end up um, the lithium concentrates over a fairly long period of time, um, in some cases up to 2 million years. And so very similar to uranium, it, it, it concentrates uh, from the bottom uh, up to the top. However, there is uh, some capillary action and been some fairly extensive studies of lithium and uh, we know through capillary action from the, the heat of the sun and the infra, uh, the um, uh, radiation that the uh, brines are brought to the surface and they drag the lithium up with them. Um, so in actual fact, uh, a lower grade is better than a higher grade because lithium tends to grab hold of uh, chlorides and sulfates and so forth. So um, you don't want it to go out of solution. You want to keep it in solution um, so you can recover it. So this, this Salah, um, while it's slightly high in magnesium, um, which the EcoSolf process can easily handle, um, it, it's, it's quite a good opportunity for this salt lake. So um, Salah basically means closed salt lake. Okay, okay. Now, what is the setup then between AIS and Tech One in terms of ownership, funding and exploration work? Okay, so AIS um, used its contacts uh, in Argentina, and as you're probably aware, I've been working in Argentina for the last 20 odd years, so I know a lot of people and I've explored basically all 26 Salars, um, either been there or uh, dug some holes or looked at brines or drilled some holes. Um, so we have a very good understanding of the, the lithium uh, scene in Argentina. So basically what we did was we negotiated um, a fantastic deal for, um, for New Tech Lithium uh, Corporation, which is a private company. And for doing that negotiation, um, drafting a plan, putting together a processing system, we earn 20% equity. So we have a free 
um, uh, equity carry in, in dollar terms. Um, we paid for it in sweat equity and expertise and knowledge. And so um, going forward, we've, we're going to execute the exploration plan. So that's AIS Resources will be executing that. So our team of uh, geos, geophysicists, geochemists, um, the SGS lab um, in, in Salta, uh, EcoSolve and their team of um, people, University of Melbourne, we're all going to be involved in um, a 450,000 US dollar uh, exploration plan to get it up a inferred resource. Um, we may need to spend a bit more than that if we put down more than one or two production wells. Um, and then once we've done that, uh, we'll then uh, decide uh, as, a, as a joint venture whether we proceed or whether they exercise their call option to buy us out for six million if we've uh, shown an inferred resource of 45,000 tonnes of lithium metal equivalent, which is roughly about five times, so it's about 220, 230,000 tonnes of lithium carbonate. Okay. And what was it that attracted you to this particular Salar then? Okay, we, we, we knew um, the guys from New Tech uh, for a while, um, not in the New Tech format, but um, we knew them and they, they were looking for a Salar and um, I guess we, we were attracted because Gangfeng was there, Peppinini's done a lot of work, uh, they've published a lot of their geophysics uh, and that was a fairly attractive. Um, Simon Alcina, who's a um, uh, manager in, in uh, Argentina that's been working with Gangfeng, um, had good reports on, uh, on their, their work. So we decided that that was probably um, dollar for, for pound or dollar for kilo of lithium, the best uh, value for money. So we went in and uh, found a, a cellar in the southern part of the Salar where the, where the brines um, flow to and uh, he was willing to sell. Uh, the negotiation was quite long. It took nearly three or four months, but uh, we got it across the line for for uh, for um, Utec Lithium. Okay. And then you mentioned earlier about uh, the option for them to take it back for, for six million US dollars if AIS get an inferred resource of, I think, up to 45,000 tonnes. So what are the future options here and, and what are the immediate steps you're going to be taking? Okay, there's, there's probably a couple of strategies here. Um, they, they have the right to call that option. So um, if we produce an inferred resource showing more than 45,000 tonnes, they can say, call our option, here's your $6 million, we now own 100%. The other alternative is they want to keep us involved in the process because uh, you know, we have significant expertise. We're the only other group apart from Oracobra that's put a commercial facility uh, into operation in Argentina. Um, and we have a lot of expertise on, on, on basically the solvent extraction process, but also fractional crystallisation, uh, absorption, absorption on ion exchange, reverse osmosis. So we, we spent a lot of time on chemistry and chemical processing, and, of course, that was led by Dr Carlos Sorrentino. Um, our second option is to uh, put in 50 million, which will be the 20%, to build a, a 15,000-tonne plant. Um, maybe it goes to 10,000 tonnes to start off with and then increments up to 15 or 20. Um, and, and so we can match them with our 20%. Uh, they'll put, put in 80%. And then the th third option is that we look at the, the project and both of us sell out to someone else, um, whereby we, we, we would probably have a proven and probable resource by then. And then whatever the project sells for, we would... Um, end up getting the 20% uh, of, of whatever the proceeds are, which would be north of $6 million. Okay. So exploration plans then, are you going to be starting pretty soon? Yeah, we started yesterday, actually. Um, we're, our geologists are uh, going up there taking a 200-litre brine sample, and that uh, will go to the University of Melbourne to be processed using the EcoSolve system um, so we can tweak it for the particular um, a range of... Uh, of brine combinations of elements, calcium, magnesium, potassium, um, sodium, uh, sulfates and chlorides. Then uh, we're parallel to that, we'll be running um, a, a bit of surface sampling and looking at the crystal structures on the surface. And then once we finish that, we will, or um, parallel to that project, we'll be um, running some geophysics 
and doing a, a, a um, VES survey, um, or we may do a CSAMT survey. Uh, we haven't quite decided yet, but probably VES um, being a shallow solar. And uh, once we've got that, that'll give us our drill hole targets. Um, we roughly know where we're going to drill now, but uh, we just want to prove that up and make sure we have the depth right and, and have the location right. Um, once that's done, assuming that's successful, um, we'll start put down two production wells in those um, exploration holes um, and then put some further holes around it to monitor brine levels um, and then uh, test the pumping, porosity, transmissivity, and, and then that will get us to a um, measured resource, measured indicated resource statement. Okay. Well, Phil Thomas, the CEO of AIS Resources, thank you very much for your time. Great. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for listening to this Stockbox interview. For more information, interviews and videos, visit our website at stockboxmedia.com or give us a follow on Twitter by searching at Stockbox Media.